Hello YouTube, I have another PC build here for everybody. It's been about a year since my last video of a PC build, and uh, that one was a gaming PC of sorts, but this one is a workstation PC build, which I haven't done for a while. Um, it is a budget workstation, it costs about $550 so far, uh, without a Windows license, which I might end up not needing. So, definitely on the lower spectrum of costs, and as you can see, we don't have any fancy video card here, so it is, it is truly meant for the purpose of uh, just being a good cost-effective workstation. It's for my dad's office, so uh, the, the build I did a couple years ago was for the same office, um, and this one's not going to be a replacement for that AMD A10 PC, it's just going to be um, kind of like an add-on of sorts. So going over the parts here, uh, firstly I decided to go with an Intel CPU. I've gone with AMD in the past, such as for that workstation build a couple years ago, but I decided to go with Intel this time. Uh, I think it's worth the extra $50, $60, $70 to go with Intel because I do like um, just the more extensive feature set of Intel CPUs a little bit better. You know, you have hyper-threading, you have, I believe there's more um, built-in instructions into the instruction set of an Intel CPU. So I've heard that um, of a given core count and frequency, an, an Intel CPU is effectively 50% faster than an AMD CPU of, again, the same core count and frequency and all. So. Um, just didn't want to cut any corners, so I went with Intel. It's a Core i5-6500. Uh, I believe that's, wow, well, she really knows, I think it's a 3.2 gigahertz. Obviously it's a quad, it's a quad core, hyper-threaded CPU. And then I went with an MSI H110M Pro VD Plus motherboard. Obviously it has the Intel H110M chipset built in there. It's a pretty basic, uh, chipset. It's really not meant for many extensive features, which is not bad because it lowers the price. It only cost me about 50 bucks for this motherboard, which is a great deal. I think it was like 47 actually. Um, and of course, the downside is that you can't have multiple video cards because the chipset doesn't support it. It doesn't support RAID. But that really doesn't matter because this is a workstation. I'm not even going to have a video card in it in the first place, at least not a dedicated video card. So that was a pretty good deal. Obviously, you know, um, Core Intel socket 1151. Uh, two memory slots, DDR4-2133, and all that good stuff. So it'll be a good um, good motherboard for a budget workstation. And then with the memory, I decided to go with this memory here. Uh, pretty pretty standard stuff, DDR4-2133, two 8 gig chips for a total of 16 gigabytes dual channel. Uh, I actually looked on Newegg, and I found out that the same type of memory as this, but the speed up, so 2400 megahertz instead, was on sale for $15 less. I'm not sure if the sale was going on uh, the day that I purchased this, but I checked a few days later and I was kind of bummed out that I could have saved, depending on when the sale started, 15 bucks by getting a faster memory. But the motherboard only supports 2133 anyway, so I'm not too concerned. Next, we have a Samsung 850 Evo. I got a 250 gig because I, I, I wanted to get some fast storage for this unit. I was actually considering um, just coming with a standard hard drive and saving some money, but I, I did want something a little bit faster. But I wasn't really willing to spend 150, 200, 300 dollars on a 500 gig or one terabyte SSD. So I think 250 gigs is going to be plentiful because this uh, workstation is really only going to be for the purpose of essentially, you know, uh, lots of web browser tabs and Outlook and PDFs. So um, the other workstations in the same office really haven't filled up their disks at all. So I think 250 gigs will be fine for at least the next several years without needing an upgrade. And this PC is actually replacing a Dell Dimension 9200. That is very old. So um, I have a terabyte hard drive in that machine. So if this thing needs an upgrade, I can just pop a terabyte relatively new hard drive out of the old machine that this is replacing into this as a secondary. So I've got a Hyper 212 Evo cooler. I actually kind of almost face palmed a little bit because I'm so used to buying Intel CPUs without heat sinks that I got this one and realized it came with a heat sink as soon as I unboxed it. But I think um, I didn't really dig myself into too much of a hole there because the heat sinks that come with these CPUs really are kind of dinky. They really don't do a very good job, especially if you're under load, if you don't have good airflow, etc. So uh, I think it's probably not the worst thing in the world that I went with a $30 CPU cooler instead. I'll just make sure that, the, that those temperatures are nice and low, especially because this case is probably going to be in a fairly uh, crammed situation potentially with not the greatest airflow. So it's good to have a good cooler. It's had to go with a Corsair CX500 500 watt power supply. It's non-modular, which doesn't bother me too much. But uh, 
it's one of the more affordable specs of power supplies. People say to watch out for uh, cheap power supplies, but this one isn't, you know, an El Cheapo one. It's pretty, pretty solid. Uh, of course, there's a good brand, so I think I won't have any issues. I've never really had issues with power supplies before. At least not the really, really, really... Well, at least I haven't had issues with any PSU that isn't really, really cheap. Um, and then I went ahead and grabbed a DVD-ROM drive from a Dell Optiplex 780 I wasn't using. Manufactured in January of 2009. Uh, I didn't want to buy one. I'll just pull the static cable for it, too. I didn't want to buy one for 20 bucks because that would be stupid because I have so many spare ones lying around. So just in case we ever need to use a DVD drive in this machine, I do, in fact, have it. Um, just, you know, if we ever need to load Microsoft Office off a disk or anything. And for the case, I went with a Corsair Midtower 200R case. You can't see the front super great, but this was about 60 bucks. I didn't want to skip on the case too much. When I built my dad's workstation a couple years ago, I kind of um, bought a really cheap case. And it was just flimsy, really not the greatest thing in the world. So I decided to go with something that's a little bit more solid, looks good, feels good, has USB 3.0 in the front. That was a huge point of mine. Because people who are going to be using this aren't super technical, wouldn't really pay attention to USB 3.0 versus 2.0. So um, I don't want people plugging in giant you know, external hard drives and not realizing it's only 2.0. So that was a big point for me. Um, and it's a pretty solid case. I like the way it looks. It's made of mostly metal, some plastic parts. Um, so it looks like it'll be a pretty good pretty good fit. It's got a fan in the back, of course, but I was also delighted to find that it has a fan in the front as well, so I really don't need to add in any of my own fans. The only thing I don't like about it is that it has this big grate in the top. It doesn't even have a filter for it, so dust is going to fall right through these holes, which I'm kind of bummed out about, especially because the CPU is going to be right here. So I'm going to get a lot of dust and dirt and just crap falling through the top of this. People put stuff on top of it that will end up dusting up the inside and just, I don't know, it, it, it's not that big of a deal, but I'd prefer that this weren't there at all. Either that or maybe one fan slot just with a, a dust filter so we don't have any issues with that. Because um, I'm not going to be putting top fans in this. So I think that's pretty much all I got for you now at this point. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this on time-lapse mode, which a lot of you are probably waiting for, and I'll go ahead and put this thing together. Okay, so the build's all complete. That probably wasn't the most interesting time lapse I've ever done before, because it was a very basic build. A lot of just cable management stuff really took the longest, but um, it's looking pretty good. I can't help but realize how um, silly it looks because the motherboard is so small in comparison to the size of the case. A little bit ridiculous, but I think it's really not not that big of a deal. It's, this case isn't you know enormously huge, so oh. it's really not a problem anyway. Um, I decided to put the power supply phasing upwards because, you know, we have plenty of space for airflow, like I just said, so there's really no sense to have it upside down, sucking up a really dusty carpet air, so I decided probably the best option for longevity just to have it facing upwards. A lot of the time in the build was spent figuring out the heat sink and just kind of getting it all ready to go and everything lined up properly, all the pieces lined up, putting the back plate on the back side of the motherboard so that um, I would be like, you know, getting thermal compound everywhere, uh, trying to put it on without figuring it out first. 
I did what I could with the cable management. It's pretty great that it has this little back area here, but cable management isn't perfect. People are always very critical on YouTube of people's PC builds cable management wise, but I'm really not too worried about it. Nice old DVD drive is all in there. This case has four 2.5 inch surrealist bays right there that make putting the SSD very easy or make putting the SSD in very easily. I can't say words, sorry. Um, and then we have four 3.5 inch bays I'm probably not going to use. So one issue I did have was that this motherboard only has two fan ports, one for the CPU obviously and one for the system fan, which is the back fan. But this guy has nowhere to go. And I do have adapters that will adapt this to Molex, so I can plug it into some of those spare connectors down there. But I don't have any with me, so this fan might have to go not being used for a little while. It should be okay, it's not critical. I think the temperatures in the system will be absolutely fine. So I'm not too worried about it. So next step is to load Windows on it. And I do definitely like the case in general. Again, this mesh top here is kind of weird. I'm not sure if I like that, but um, otherwise, pretty happy with the case. The build quality is nice and good after having had my hands on it for a while. And uh, yeah, everything looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and try to start it up now. Okay. There's a red light there that tells me it's on. F1 to continue set up. It's telling me the memory has changed, which is obvious. Oh. So it does support mouse. It's a nice little UEFI, not like the old BIOSes of 10 years ago. Um, so as we can see, we have my SSD in there. It's out of port one. The DVD drive is out of port two, and then memory is running at the proper speed. We got 16384 megs of it. Perfect. Um, yeah, I think this all looks good. I'm just going to double check all these settings, make sure everything's on the uh, optimal settings, and I'll go ahead and start loading Windows. Alright, so the PC's all set up and going. Um, I don't have any Ethernet here. I mean, I do, but it's broken. So what I did was I took my other laptop and plugged it in through Wi-Fi and actually shared the Ethernet connection out to this machine. So it's going to theoretically have internet essentially through my laptop's Wi-Fi, which won't be super awesome, but it works at least. Um, I was digging through a bunch of my stuff, and I do actually have an adapter for this fan here, so I adapted the 3-pin to Molex. It looks like an old, crummy adapter, but I really don't care. And now that the fan's on, it's still nice and quiet. The fan doesn't make too much noise, so I'm happy with that. I'm installing the drivers from the disc. Um, now, the DVD drive actually came in handy quite a bit because I have a USB here that I load Windows from. It has a lot of different versions of Windows installers on it. But for some reason, the machine didn't want to boot off of... I mean, it would boot off the USB, but I think Windows 7 is compatible with any other USB devices built into this motherboard or on the front of the case. So it didn't really... Um, it wouldn't let me set up. It couldn't initialize the USB drive. So I had to actually burn a Windows 7 install disk uh, with my mom's laptop just for the purpose of doing the install this one time, which was a bit of a pain. It took me a little bit of extra time, but it worked out in the end. And um, it is definitely useful to also have a drive for the driver installation. Otherwise, I have to download them on my laptop and put them in a USB and transfer them over. But, um, so yeah, I'm installing those drivers off the disk. And as soon as that's done, I should hopefully have internet connection because I don't have uh, the LAN drivers installed at all right now. So I can't get internet through that network cable and download the latest ones. So... At any rate, um, things are looking good. I'll probably do a little bit more of an update once everything is set and done. Alright, so the Windows 7 key I had didn't work out. Uh, Microsoft blocked it for activation, and uh, it didn't really work out like I had hoped. So I went ahead and I bought a brand new copy of Windows 10 Home. And this, this is for a semi-professional environment, but I do not need the features of Windows 10 Professional, um, like join domains and deploying GPOs and things like that. So. Windows 10 Home was going to serve, or is going to serve, the purpose of this PC just fine, so I went ahead and installed it. Um, it seems to be running smoothly. I actually installed the drivers off of the setup disk, which I did not take out yet, um, because my internet is so slow that I don't feel like downloading them here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this to the office where it's going to be set up and uh, go ahead and do the rest of the software install. So. That's where I'm going to leave the video off now. You know, the PC is running quite well. It runs nice and zippy with that SSD and everything, um, as we can see. We're running at pretty low 
CPU usage and everything, you know, a, few, a matter of a few percent. If I go ahead and I change this graph to be um, logical CPUs, we only got four of them. I guess hyperthreading is not turned on, but at any rate, 16 gigs of memory, everything looks good. Um, so that'll be it for now. So, all in all, thank you all for watching, and I hope to make more videos like this in the future.